Hi, welcome to Red by Red. I'm Red, and today I'm going to be reading some r slash pro revenge. Ready? Let's go. Terror neighbors make our lives hell. Return the favor and get them raided. As we found out that we'd be expecting not one, but two kids, we knew we had to move to a real house with more space. At the time, we were still living in a one bedroom studio, one up from the ground floor, with its only entrance being a metal fire escape. Not ideal for a pregnant woman, let alone to live with two small babies. So we found a privately leased house that was newly renovated and had all the room and a large garden we were looking for. Signed the lease and immediately collected the keys. As the owner drove off, the woman next door comes up to me, immediately demanding that we not make noise before noon as her boyfriend works nights and sleeps in and a whole bunch of other do's and don'ts. So right off the bat, new trouble incoming. As the house was fully renovated and not much had to be done, we were like, don't poke the bear. We'll do the things that make noise after noon. We moved in after two weeks and the whole street was warm and welcoming. My wife was almost due to give birth to my twin daughters and some of the neighbors offered to help with anything we needed. Really kind people. They also told us about our neighbors. Nobody liked them. He was a big bully and got into arguments with everybody. Also, they were known as radio pirates, as in illegal broadcasting on radio with all Dutch bangers. This music is just terror on your ears and possibly used on terrorists in black sites. Which went along with them partying Thursday to Sunday till 5 in the morning. Loud music, constant yelling, always drunken, etc. Really something to look forward to when moving in, certainly with two babies on the way. The partying began immediately, full blast, real classy for someone demanding to be quiet when douchebag needs his beauty sleep. Then one day my father-in-law came to put new grass in. He has his trailer parked at the back of the house which is public space. Not according to the neighbour though, no, that's exact spot where the trailer, full with grass sods, quite heavy stuff, was parked was his spot and we had to move the trailer not going to happen as I was not planning to walk all the way around the house with the sods. He gets angry right away and demanded I move it. I told him to go screw himself. I was done with him already then and there. I'm also a ginger so besides having no soul I do have a temper which is always in check until you provoke me repeatedly. Anyone who knows me will tell you that you really have to make an effort for that to happen. We went on working and end of day comes when my father-in-law wants to leave. He hooks up the trailer and BAM! There was douchebag telling him off, yelling that it's his spot and he better not do that again or else. Mess with me all you want, I can handle it. But what you don't do is threaten my family. I ran outside and told him in no uncertain terms to back off or he'll be the sorry one. Total bluff on my side. Yes, I have that temper, but I'm not impressively built and have no hidden fighting skills. I do fight dirty. He backs off. Father-in-law leaves and I go inside where I find my wife crying. She got scared of him maybe doing something to her father and or me and this is something we don't need right now. Combined with hormones from being pregnant and you can paint that picture. So I'm even more pissed, but had to promise not to act on anything. I won't dear. Not yet anyway. Time went on without any real incident and then came the time my wife goes into labour. Didn't go smooth and ended up having to deliver with C-section because daughter 2 was almost strangled by the umbilical cord. We had to stay three nights, excruciating nights due to a lot of things. Finally we get to go home. Family had put a giant sign in our front yard welcoming the babies. The sign was already up for a few days prior to coming home, so our friendly neighbours definitely knew about it. But did they give a flying frick? No, they did not. From the first night on, they started partying and broad blasted their terror music. They started at noon and continued till 5 or 6 in the morning. Classy. 
They also kept going for days. So it wasn't just Thursday to Sunday. It was all week long. And the next. So we were broken. Hardly slept. One of our daughters suffered from heavy cramps combined with all the noise and her parents at the end of their wits. So she cried a lot. And then I just had it. I researched some things on Radio Pirates. The laws and regulations on his large 5 meter plus antenna in his backyard, which was illegal in itself. But he used it to illegally broadcast on radio, which meant he had a lot of equipment to do so. Which was even more illegal. And can even get you jailed. But at the very least they could seize all of it and fine him big time. In the 10 to 45,000 area. Now, I did not immediately turn him in, but instead went looking for another house to lease first. This is because I figured it wouldn't sit well with him and having a wife and two babies in the house alone during the day because I had to go to work. I hear you guys thinking, why not involve the police? Well, they're utterly useless in cases like this. We called once. What they did disturbs me to this day. They rang their doorbell and immediately started off by saying we called them about noise complaints. Yeah. You read that right. No protection whatsoever. Just blatantly told them that we were the reason they're there. Told them to keep it down and that was it. They didn't even follow up with us or anything. As you can guess, Douchebag now was even more pissed and told me the next day or yelled over the fence that separates our backyards that I really should not do that again. A threat, yet again, of which I told the police. I didn't report it the first time as I chalked that up to alpha male in the heat of the moment. But without witnesses to corroborate, nothing could be done yet again. Some days later I walked out the front door and he just stepped out of his car, came up to me demanding I cut back some of our ivy that grew on our side of the fence because it tangled in with his big ass antenna. He would be gone for some hours and I could come into his garden to cut back the ivy that grew there on their side. And then a light bulb went off above my head. I told him politely that I would do that immediately. Why? Because that gave me an opportunity to find out the make and model of his antenna to ascertain its signal strength, where the cables go exactly, and what kind of cables they were. Again, to know the signal strength it handled. Also, it gave me a good view of the equipment he had through the window so I could snap some photographs of it. This was the icing on the cake. Because in the meantime, we did manage to find a new home and had already signed the lease, so we would be gone in two weeks. Luckily, we only had to paint some walls for the girls' room and just pack up our things and move them to the other house. So, after I trimmed the ivy, collected my evidence, I went online that night to find out the proper channels to report a broadcast pirate and which entity was tasked with catching said pirate. Turned out I had to call the telecom agency, but also the police. Wasn't too happy with the latter, but I remembered I have a nephew that works for the police. Officially his area was immigration, but he knew enough colleagues that could help us and we could trust not to confront them again, saying that I was the one that sent them. That was extremely important for our safety when doing what I was doing. So I gave both the agency and the police all the evidence I collected, pointed them to the frequencies he pirated so they could listen in. Then they started a neighborhood investigation, which wasn't really necessary, but this was to cover our butts to make it look like he got caught by accident because they had an active investigation in our area. You never know what he can learn from legal documents and such. We asked them to wait with the raid, Yes, they raid pirates houses, preferably in the early hours of the day because his beauty sleep rendering him incapable of fleeing or hiding evidence, etc. We moved two weeks later and they raided him two days after we moved. All of his equipment, computers, radios, cell phones and his car were seized. He left in cuffs, his wife or girlfriend did too, for making a big scene and trying to interfere. All of which was live reported to me by one of my ex-neighbours who was equally ecstatic about this. Turned out, this wasn't the first time he got caught but his third time. His car had no insurance on it and his MOT failed. This would normally have no big consequence because he didn't drive it while raided but they had the guy surveilled on for weeks and that definitely meant he was seen driving it while not having insurance and valid MOT. 
He was fined somewhere around 30,000 euros, went to jail for 12 weeks and everything seized was destroyed except the car. His girlfriend had to do something like 40 hours of community service. They had to sell the house which made for very happy neighbours as they too were over and done with them. Like I said, I do fight, but very dirty. You have to really make an effort for me to get to that point. They did, and suffered. Over a year later, when shopping for groceries, I encountered them with the foulest of looks. If looks could kill, I would be a smouldering heap of ash, but nothing more than that. Whoa. crazy I'm sorry there's like no one report their five meter antenna like that's a that's tall that's a lot that's like that's like two and a half tall guys um I don't know what it is in feet so hey Google what's Five meters in feet. Five meters is equal to 16 feet, 4.85 inches. So there you go. It's like 16 feet. So, yeah, that's a lot. Oh, wow. That's so crazy. That's a good, that's a necessary revenge, though. I'm, seriously, what? I didn't know people still did pirate radio. Would you like another story? Because I've got one for you. Homeowner got what was coming to him after daily harassment. I worked in an engineering construction job last year for a home builder and we've had to deal with a bunch of 5G anti-vaxxer health nuts moving into one of our neighborhoods. Constant complaints about construction, the noise, the debris, which made no sense because they chose to move into the neighborhood before construction was completed. One man in particular would harass us daily, complaining about the streetlights being too bright, they weren't, and complaining about the generator we had running about a block away from him to power the site temporarily until we had the infrastructure in. The complaints ranged from the generator was damaging his hearing, the thing was almost completely silent, or that the fumes from the generator were coming to his house and causing him and his kids to have stunted development. They would come up with stuff that made little to no sense. It escalated to the point where he got the city and the mayor involved, and we got sued. So we gave in to his requests and moved the generator to an inconvenient location, and had to take the time and money to rewire to be able to power the areas needed. This was including important stuff like the streets lights. We had to leave off for a couple of nights until the move was complete. And you guessed it, he would call to complain. The nerve of this man! So, here comes the revenge. We received an order from the city to install a 5G tower on site to improve cellular connection because the area we were in had a pretty bad service. Since my team and I were in charge of creating the plans to install the infrastructure, guess where we all simultaneously agreed to put the tower? Right smack dab in front of the angry man's house. We thought this was incredibly hilarious and couldn't stop laughing every time he would call freaking out while the tower was being constructed. Got to the point he even tried to file another lawsuit. Got laughed away and within a week we never heard from them again. Moved out faster than the wind. <laughs> I think you saved the future residents of that neighborhood a lot of trouble by getting rid of those people. Like, ah, oh, 5G, oh my god, my stunted development. Ugh. Like, well, I'm sorry, and you moved into a neighborhood that's under construction and then complain about construction. Like, you know, I moved into a neighborhood that's being redeveloped. Um, and I knew that. And yeah, sometimes there's construction noise because they're making things better. Like, oh god, people are so dumb sometimes. <gasps> I hope you enjoyed those r slash pro revenge stories read by Red. That's me. 
please give the video a like if you did enjoy them and don't forget to subscribe as well if you haven't done that already. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.